you've seen any of my videos that uh, uh, I've been carving wood since I retired, about four years now. And uh, I carve uh, sculptures and all sorts of things. But rather than use, uh, you know, kiln dried wood and glue them together to make a, a chunk, uh, I prefer to use hardwoods that I already have on, on the property here, and that's predominantly walnut and cherry. So uh, I don't kill a tree, I just wait for one to die, and, then I, and there's plenty of them to do that, so I got plenty of wood. The issue though is it's got to be dry. Especially in, when you're working with a log, like uh, these here, that I have drying in my shed, uh, there it takes a long time for them to dry. And I need a way to, uh, to check the moisture level in these logs to see what kind of progress I'm making on the drying process. Uh, you can see these are pretty thick logs. They're in out of the weather here in the shade in the uh, shed, but uh, I gotta check them. So I'm gonna. Uh, I've been looking online. They, may, they sell something called a moisture checker for wood, and uh, they're three or four hundred bucks. And I don't want to spend that kind of money on a moisture checker. So I'm gonna make one and. Uh, it's going to take a little bit to do that, but I'm going to, I, I got to figure it out how I'm going to do it, and that's next. Okay, I want to try to explain a little bit of the theory behind uh, or what I got in mind to check moisture content. Uh, those moisture checkers that you can buy use uh, electricity, DC electricity passing through uh, a sample of the wood you want to check for moisture and it measures the resistance in the wood. Now, if it's dry wood, the resistance is infinite because it won't conduct electricity if it's 100% dry. And as it gets more and more moisture in it, the conductivity improves and resistance goes down. And uh, if we can measure that and then make an estimate of how much water content is in the wood. I'm gonna have to do some trials with known samples in order to uh, make a chart so I can uh, decide that percent moisture. But just to give you an idea, uh, these samples here I have here, uh, remember the wood is zero conductivity, but uh, uh, it is dry. But you put water in it, it'll conduct electricity. Now this is distilled water here, and this is uh, well water that's been run through a uh, water softener. Uh, so, and this sample over here is distilled water that's got table salt in it, and we're going to check the relative uh, moisture, or the relative conductivity. So, if I just touch the electrodes together, you can see there's zero resistance, and uh, if I put it in the distilled water, I got uh, infinite resistance, zero conductivity. So that water, distilled water, doesn't conduct electricity any better than the wood does. So if I put it in the well water that's got iron, you know, you soften it and it uses uh, salt to do that. So if I do that, yeah, I can get some pretty good current flow there. And uh, still a lot of resistance, but uh, way better than distilled. Now if I go with the salt, distilled water with salt, you can see it's almost the same as the uh, soft water. So uh, when it, you have water in wood, the wood has impurities in it of course, and uh, them impurities I'm sure is what's giving the water the ability to uh, conduct electricity or the providing electrolytes to do that and I'm sure it's different in different species so uh, I'm going to have to set up a test to determine how much conductivity I need and I'm, I know I'm going to have to provide more power because this has just got a double-a battery driving this which is a volt and a half 
and I'm, I'm going to boost that up with some 9 volt batteries in series to get higher voltage so I get something that's easier to read on the, on the scale. Uh, that'll be next. Alright, now I'm going to explain uh, how I'm going to prepare a chart to compare the ohms resistance in a uh, log sample that I've measured with the uh, mold checker or mold, uh, ohm checker with uh, how to get moisture content from that data. So I'm going to have to prepare some uh, samples and measure those with various known moisture contents and plot those on a chart. So uh, I'm going to start with zero moisture and I should get infinite ohms or zero conductivity with those but I'm going to start with that and uh, I've prepared a couple of samples uh, walnut and cherry. I'm going to dry these in my wife's oven when uh, she's not home and uh, I'm going to do it at a temperature that won't create any smoke and make sure there's no uh, coatings on these uh, so they don't start smoking too. Anyway, I'm going to drive all the moisture out of these samples and then uh, obviously if I measure them there'll be zero, zero conductivity in them but I need to weigh them after I've done that and precisely weigh them. Now, they make uh, scientific scales, they call them, uh, work with load cells or whatever electronic means they use nowadays, but uh, they're uh, expensive and I don't want to buy one of them either. So I'm going to make what we used to call a balance scale, use them for hundreds of years, and uh, they work just fine. In fact, uh, that's what they ought to use in the school still because uh, people can learn how to do things. So to make that, I made a sketch, what I'm going to make. Uh, I'm going to put uh, one of these on each end, it's just a disposable bowl. And uh, I'm going to describe this in detail with a little more detail drawing for you here. Uh, starting at the bottom. I've got a 2 to 4 base, about 14 inches long. I'm going to put some uh, legs on the bottom of them, just short ones, just so they don't wobble on the bench. Uh, I'm going to have to prepare a fulcrum for this beam to, to uh, balance on, and I'm making that out of 2 inch steel. And uh, I'm going to grind a, an edge on that. It doesn't have to be super sharp, razor sharp or anything, but it's got to be pretty sharp. And uh, still looking at the bottom section here, they're going to put a couple of blocks of wood on either end of this to limit the travel of the beam so it doesn't tilt that far. It doesn't have to tilt very far. You're trying to get a balance. So you can see that without a lot of travel. Now the beam itself is going to be three quarters by an inch and a half poplar. I have, I'm using these woods because I have them already. Uh, I'm going to cut me a piece of steel. I'm going to look in the scrap and see what I can find to, to work as a bearing. Then I'm going to glue to the bottom of this beam and then uh, now that gave me a, a means to make a uh, balance. Uh, to hold the sample I'm going to, I've got some one inch uh, steel bar stock that I'm going to cut and bend a little curve on there uh, so that it fits the bottom of the the bowls that I'm going to use and I'm going to bolt those to each end of this uh, beam and once I get this assembled I'll have to uh, you know for calibrate it or fine tune it so that it's in balance but we'll cover that later so right now I'm going to have to go find me some steel later okay this is uh, one of my five gallon buckets full of scrap pieces been accumulating this for a long time just little bits and pieces of stuff so I'm looking for some two inch bar stock and uh, yeah, I've got a piece right here and uh, I'll use that cut me off some of it and I got some one inch right here too that I can use and then for that uh, that bearing I need a small piece of real small angle iron if I got any here 
So I've got, wait a minute, what is this piece? Yeah, that's, I don't know what that used to be, but I cut me a piece off of that. And uh, just need a little piece of that, but I like that angle and I like a thin metal. So that's going to be the other piece. All right, that's it. Let's go make them. Okay, I'm going to have to grab me a knife edge on this steel before I go and cut it, while I get a good hold of it. Way to use a balance scale is with uh, pre-measured weights, like uh, either in units of grams or troy ounces or something like that. But anyway, these you have to buy certified weights, and I don't have that, so I want to make up my own unit of measure, and that unit of measure is going to be lock washer because I got a lot of them, and. Uh, I've done a little bit of testing in advance and determined that uh, one dime is equivalent to, by weight, equivalent to seven of those lock washers and a quarter is equal to uh, 17 lock washers or two dimes and three lock washers. So for weighing up these samples, uh, uh, I'll use quarters and dimes and for fractions of dimes I'll use lock washers until it balances and then I'll uh, be able to uh, measure that. So that's, my, that's why I'm doing it. Okay I finally finished this balance scale and uh, just to go over uh, construction again these are just disposable uh, bowls and then I've got this uh, these steel uh, pieces here to hold the bowls and this is a balance beam and I've uh, glued that bearing on the bottom and then I've got a, that two inch piece of steel here and these are bumpers for the trim, uh, travel limits and uh, that's pretty much it I've got uh, washers underneath here to, uh, that I use different types of washers to balance this beam perfectly and uh, it uh, it's really pretty close and there is some friction in that bearing that's not a precision ground bearing or anything like that and just done with a file but I've determined that the difference to overcome the friction on this uh, one side to the other is about two washers which is equivalent to about 0.6 grams so if I need to I'll take that into account when I'm measuring something uh, I've got the two dots on there so I'm consistently putting my sample to be me measured on one side and the uh, known weights on the other side so I can be consistent about it so I'm doing it the same way every time um, so this is how I'll uh, measure up those uh, samples that I'm going to be checking moisture content. Okay, it's time to measure up this cherry sample. Uh, 
I uh, didn't use the oven. I actually used a microwave to dry it out. And in fact, I know it's dry because it caught on fire in the microwave. But anyway, it's out and uh, I've got uh, seven quarters in the pan right now and they're at 100 or 17 each so that's 119 and uh, let's see how many more it takes to trip it that's 120 121 okay now I have to get on and measure the uh, walnut piece Later. okay it's time to uh, add back some water to these uh, wood samples that I dried out and measured. Uh, I'm hoping to add back uh, roughly 5% uh, each time I take a reading with the multimeter. So uh, to control that somewhat I'm going to measure out how much water I'm actually going to allow that to take each time. And uh, the cherry sample for example, uh, took 121 washers, so I'm going to go about seven. And uh, that I got a dime in this pan, which is equal to seven washers. And to tear out the weight of the cup, I've got one in each side. So now I just need to add water to this side until it uh, trips. I think it's going to take a little bit. get it in there that'll do it I'll just uh, put it in a Ziploc bag and let it go into the wood later Okay, I wanted to put these samples in a warm environment so it uh, hastens the absorption or evaporation of this water sample. And you're not going to get any hotter in my garage in the summer. So I'm going to set that in there like that. Let's set overnight probably. Come back and see how we're doing. But I'm thinking that's going to completely absorb all that water in no time. Okay, I uh, completed the uh, data collection on the samples of the cherry and the walnut and uh, gradually added moisture, weighed it out on the scale over there and, and uh, after, the, uh, after a couple of days each time I come in here and I measured the uh, ohms resistance between my two uh, checkpoints and then I plotted that data uh, on a data sheet and I'll give you an example of that here. Here's this is the cherry data sheet. And uh, uh, after that was complete, I uh, decided to plot that data on a piece of graph paper. And this is uh, what it looks like. Uh, I'll describe it in more detail here. Uh, if you look at the uh, y-axis on the left, that's the uh, ohms resistance in the uh, test and this is in thousands of ohms and that is plotted on a logarithm scale to make it so it will fit on a graph. Uh, along the bottom is the, uh, the x-axis is in uh, uh, moisture content of the sample piece and those are precision uh, weighed on a scale each time and uh, so then I plotted uh, a curve for various voltages that I used in the uh, ohm meter. The standard voltage is 1.5, it's a AA battery, it comes with it. And uh, then I, I added one 9 volt battery to get 10.5, a second to get 19.5, and then a third to get 28.5. Then I ran out of 9 volt batteries, so that's as high as I could go. Uh, as you can see, the uh, 1.5 volt uh, readings are not very sensitive uh, to the moisture content so that really that particular pot is not really usable and then likewise the 19.5 uh, and the 28.5 are real sensitive to moisture so they came out kind of vertical 
and uh, so they're not very usable. But the Goldilocks plot is a 10.5 volts, and that's the one I'll use uh, to uh, to measure these logs. And uh, I did a similar one for uh, walnut. You see it here. Uh, in the walnut case, I had uh, quite a bit of variation between the data as I added moisture compared to the data as I deleted moisture. Uh, I checked these samples going uh, by adding moisture and then I also come right back down that scale uh, by using the microwave oven to uh, take moisture out and plotted that as well. So there was some difference and that's what you see here in these two uh, spreads on the 19 and a half and the 28 volt. Uh, but I'm not using them anyway. I'm going to use the 10 point volt Goldilocks value here uh, like I did with the cherry. And uh, that's uh, pretty much it for the test. So I'm going to go out now and see where my, what kind of values I get uh, for the logs that I've got out there trying to dry. Okay. Later. Get ready to go out and measure the measure that uh, moisture content in one of my logs out there. I'm going to drill a hole four inches deep about the diameter of this probe and because that's the size drill I got and the size probe I have so that's how I'm going to do it and I want to measure I want to drill two holes parallel half inch apart and then check the electricity running across the bottom of the hole between them them two holes and I'm going to use I just got a piece of eighth inch steel here and it's uh, it's painted in the middle because I don't want I want to check the the uh, moisture at the bottom of the hole not somewhere in between so I'm way down here I want to insulate this so I want to check the insulation value here or make sure it's okay putting it on ohms if I go end to end I'm getting a reading which I should but if I go to the middle nothing so that paint's insulating it pretty good. And that's what I want. Next. All right, I got a eighth inch drill, and I preset this depth at four inches. I'm gonna drill two holes into that log over there, and uh, I'm gonna go down four inches. So that's all the way to the bottom. Try to keep the, uh, the drill perpendicular to the wood so that the bottom of these two holes are still a half inch apart at the bottom. Okay, I thought I'd go over this setup uh, on this ohm meter. Uh, I mentioned before that uh, this has got a AA battery driving it, and that's just one and a half volts. And I need more power so I can get more travel out of this uh, indicator, uh, make it easier to read. So uh, I'm going to put a couple of 9 volt batteries in series with that one. And uh, I've already attached them here, and I've got. Uh, the two batteries right there taped to the uh, meter and I've got a little jumper lead going from one battery to the other battery from the plus to the minus and uh, I've on the uh, other side uh, so it's coming in coming in like this so you can see the travel of the current and uh, I've got this plus lead here going to the red uh, probe on the tester and then this becomes the red probe now and I will uh, clamp that to uh, one of the metal probes that I'm sticking in the wood and that gives me one side the other side just simply take the black probe and touch the other 
uh, uh, probe that I've stuck into the wood. So between the two of them, I should have 20 volt current running between the two, between these two here. I don't want to touch them together because uh, it'll ruin the meter, but uh, that's next. Okay, I'm ready to take a reading on this log. I'm on the end right here. I've got another one in the middle, but uh, right now I'm going to check the end. Put these probes in here first. I've got to make sure it's seated. You can hear the sound of it. Okay, they're, uh, they're in there, they're still a half inch apart here, so maybe okay. Now let's check, let's see what we get. This is uh, one lead I'm going to put, just clamp it to one of them, and then watch the meter. Oh boy, that's wet. That is wet. really wet. Huh. Well, according to this, that's too wet to get a measurement. Wow. Let's try a let's try it with just the uh, one and a half volts. That should be this. Just one and a half. I took the two nine volt batteries out of it. All right, I'm getting about uh, looks like about twenty five or thirty thousand ohms, and an that that's an actual measurement. So that means it's pretty darn wet, probably. Anyway, it'll be wetter than that in the middle, probably. I think maybe one 9 volt battery might be enough to measure this. So that's where we are. Okay, the two uh, 9 volt batteries in series turned out to be a little too much voltage for what I'm trying to do. Uh, that gave me almost 20 volts and now I decided to go with just one 9 volt battery. So that plus the double A that's in there gives me about 10 volts. And uh, we'll use that and see what happens. Okay, I have uh, drilled and holes in these logs and put uh, pins in at either three or four inches, depending on the diameter of the log. And I've checked the the uh, ohms resistance readings on all these at various voltages. And I've uh, compiled that information on this data sheet here. And uh, I've uh, concluded that uh, the walnut log which is this one is 30% uh, moisture level so it's not ready to cut into yet according to my chart and this log here this is a 18 inch cherry and according to my data this is 20% approximately at this point anyway it may be a little higher than that in the middle but on the end down here it's 20 percent so it's I think I could get away with cutting into that one and use it this winter for some wood uh, these other logs on the other hand I uh, had cut those for a friend and it was a live tree the tree had been damaged by storms they wanted it out and it's a good sized log so I thought I'd cut it but these logs unfortunately are soaking wet they're like 40 to 50 percent moisture right now and that's they've been sitting here for seven months so I can I'm either gonna have to take the bark off and accelerate the drying process a little bit or just cut them up for firewood and start over with a dead tree uh, obviously the dead tree option is uh, quicker and easier so that's maybe what I'll do and uh, That'll be uh, pretty much my conclusion of this video.